Okay, we're back live here at Sapphire Now. Exciting afternoon. We just had the live press conference broadcasting on SiliconAngle.com. This is the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, and we are here with Wikibon analyst David Floyer and Jeff Kelly. We're going to break down the press conference. Guys, uh, we've got the co-CEOs talking about their innovation I strategy. And like every year, like clockwork, they get up there and they, and they field the press uh, questions from the global press corps. They're going for questions to Germany here in Orlando from a global press corps. So a variety of diverse questions. But obviously, um, this is a chance for the CEOs to kind of answer direct questions, beat the fire, so to speak, and try to dance their way through their positioning Let's take a look um, at and you know just some highlights is uh, you know big data is not really on their key messaging but it's big part of their 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 strategy and it's all about HANA one problem all one platform all problems solved SAP is a first strategy like ERP back in the day um, competitors don't like that HANA exists was a quote I heard from Schnabe off stage and he said quote this is Jim Schnabe we have two years lead over the competitors they think it's so great, they are betting the farm on it, and it's what's called the petabyte farm, as we found out was the code name of HANA. They're betting the petabyte farm on HANA. David Floyer, I know that you're um, kind of talking about lead balloons and <laughs> some good things. Uh, quick take on, on the press conference from you. Well, the particular thing that I thought was stretching it more than a little bit was to say that HANA was the only tool that you would need essentially that you should have HANA first and that would lead the big data revolution. Uh, clearly HANA is a good product, uh, but it has very significant limitations. It has a very small total storage capability, to total cube if you like, data cube, uh, uh, before it really gets very, very expensive compared with other solutions. So it's good, it's fast, but it's not scalable. Uh, and they will need to have different architectures in that area. Well, they said, quote, SAP could run 90% of their customers in memory. Yeah, but that's of their current application. So what, what big data is looking at and what big streams are looking at in the future is huge amounts of data coming in from Internet of Things, coming in uh, increases in data from today's environments. Those will, there is no way that you will be able to put that sort of data into a DRAM as opposed to other ways of doing it. And there's no way that their architecture, which goes from DRAM directly to disk, will sustain that level of, uh, uh, of uh, scalability. So HANA may well evolve and, and they will have to do a lot of work. But the, uh, the, the, the idea that that is going to be the basis of all an organization's real-time uh, 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 analytical uh, interpretation is to me uh, just, just missing the boat by a mile, a, a fundamental misunderstanding. Jeff? Yeah, I, I, agree with, I agree with David, and I think what's interesting, so the, that, that quote or that comment they made about, you know, we can, Hannah can now handle 90% of our clients' workloads. Well, we're just in the early days of big data. We're still at the early adopter phase, maybe starting to, to, to make the leap to the early majority. Um, but, you know, and I, and I mean this with all due respect, but SAP customers are not exactly the leading edge uh, when it comes to big data. So when their clients start to actually ingest and start to want to make use of all this data that David's talking about, then let's ask, uh, SAP that question, can you well, still handle 90% of their data? Well, you're referring, you're referring to the existing SAP and David's talking about the apps. And you, so, so a couple of things that came out of the press conference I want to ask you, Jeff, is that he talked about the word hand-me-down customers. And, and you know, Bill McDermott's out there, you know, he's a competitor. We're winning business on, on the table, not as hand-me-down deals. Well, let's talk about what's going on in the analytics market. Obviously, SAP has been on the analytics message for multiple years since we've been here. And it's been right on, it's been great. A speed of business, it's evolved. And it's really a value proposition that they can hang, it hangs together, it's awesome. No, no questions asked there, check the box. However, with big data going mainstream, um, I can imagine that HANA is getting the tires kicked for people who don't even have SAP. So that's why I asked that question. I want to ask you this question, do they have a shot Jeff and then David, you can comment from the infrastructure standpoint, to run the table if they have, quote, two years lead over the competitors and blazing speed in memory database, <laughs> do they just go greenfield on the analytics market and just say, forget the ERP type apps? Jeff, what's your take on that? I think it's going to be a tough sell, I think, for a lot of uh, new business to invest in HANA um, if they're not already an SAP shop. You know, they, they, it's interesting, the comment that they have a two year head start 
Um, I'm not sure a head start over what exactly. I mean, there there are a slew of MPP databases out there that do a lot of the analytic type workloads uh, that HANA is aimed at. Um, you know, there are a, a number of uh, databases in the NoSQL space that uh, focus on that use Flash and memory to focus on more of those streaming data that David mentioned earlier. So I'm not exactly sure what what they mean by by a two-year head start. I'm not sure who they're referring David, to. David, David, obviously, you know, if you can abstract away the complexities of the infrastructure, the software-led infrastructure that we're following, and you focus on the applications, you can sneak Hana above that and not make it a database technology, but make it kind of a ingestion a, a layer. Yes. I mean, there's it's, it's plausible. Oh, I think that SAP's sales motion is excellent because they talk about business value. Uh, they, 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 That's code uh, words for we don't want to talk speeds and feeds. Exactly, and that is good news. And, 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 and from, a, from a lot of the introductory technologies from the technologists far, talk far too much about the uh, technology itself and not enough about the value. So they do have a good straightforward business value and they have access to the, uh, the leading executives in an organization. So from that point of view, they do have an advantage. Um, but uh, that advantage is not, not a sustainable advantage, in my view, uh, for building a analytics platform. At one stage or another, you have to go to the analysts themselves, the, the, the business analysts, and they will not be happy with the limitations, in my view, uh, of the SAP. So yes, and, and uh, just to add on to what Jeff was saying, there are a lot of good companies, like Aerospike, for example, who have great technology uh, for the streaming data, massive, massive amounts of data coming in, on, in, in, a, in a, a, at a level of ingestion that SAP just never comes across. So it's, it's horses for courses, uh, big data is a big tent, and uh, HANA uh, can address a small percentage of that big tent. So, you know, we're, we at SiliconANGLE and Wikibon, we go to the, wherever the action is, we're obviously bringing the cube, this is our flagship program, we go extract a signal from the noise, we're here doing that, but we'll go wherever the stories are. So, obviously I asked a question during the press conference, I asked about big data and new business, they kind of gave me the onstage answer in front of the entire world, um, so I kind of went and chased Schnabe directly, and I asked him about the lead, he said two years, and I talked about the competition, he says competitions don't like that, that HANA exists, great bravado, good rhetoric, but then I asked him for specifics on new business. He said, uh, quote, a third of the business is non-SAP. They're using HANA, it's not even, no SAP apps, not even SAP customers. A third are SAP apps, okay? And uh, the third is non-SAP apps, but SAP customers. I'm sorry, third SAP customers. Third non-SAP completely. A third is SAP customers and apps, and a third is non-SAP um, customers that have apps, but SAP customers, meaning ERP. So, so you're seeing kind of the breakdown uh, there. Um, seems legitimate, I mean, given the demand of big data from across the board, someone wants to ring the doorbell, knock on the door, HANA's enticing, the messaging has been capturing everyone's attention. Yeah, it, for, for current businesses, it's a good tool. Um, and data and memory is very fast indeed, and it's a good way of doing it, it excellent. Um, that it's the longevity of that particular architecture that I uh, I, I have a uh, have a problem with, but yeah, you would Jeff, agree. Jeff, what's your take on that? Obviously, yeah. big data is this is big data. They, they, they're still hiding from big data. SAP, you know, just put the stake in the ground <laughs> and say we are a big data company, mobile, social, cloud. It's a big data. It's all big data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, just so uh, just for the record, so I think it is a good product. Uh, I think it's going to be very helpful for existing SAP customers uh, who are looking to improve the performance of existing implementations and are looking to do more predictive analytics to really drive their business. Um, I think it, you know, there will be some appeal to developers. Uh, I know SAP is putting a lot of effort into, develop into the developer community um, to find, get new businesses to, to start building on top of HANA. Um, you know, and to the extent that they make it a, um, from a, an economically viable option uh, and, and make the cloud-based option uh, attractive to developers, you know, they may have some leverage there to Snobby's comment that about a third of the uh, uh, business so far has been in, the HANA business has been in new companies. Um, that said, as David said, the, as their customers start to expand their, their um, I guess you could call it big data footprint, there's no question 
that you're going to need more tools and technologies to support a, a, a large, comprehensive big data platform. Um, HANA alone is not going to su uh, suffice if you want to build a truly big, comprehensive big data platform that is bringing in data from multiple sources, SAP and non-SAP, inside your data center and outside. Structured data, multi-structured, unstructured, um, this requires uh, you know, multiple technologies, and, and you know, we see this even in, not in the big data world. There are very few uh, heterogeneous IT shops these days. I mean, everyone's got a kind of a mixture of, of technologies and they've got to work together. So, uh, my advice for SAP is to continue, um, you know, continue with the messaging, it's very good as you said. Uh, they've got the business relationships and they are very good with uh, telling the business story and the business value, and I think that's right on. We need more of that in the big data space. But what they've got to do is continue to develop the platform and create those connections where they can't develop the, the capabilities themselves with HANA, develop connections, be, take an open approach so that you can bring in things like Hadoop, you can bring in things like Aerospike, and make use of, a, of these different technologies and weave them together into a comprehensive platform. Uh, because HANA alone, in the long run, I don't think it's going to suffice. Okay, this is Silicon Angle and Wikibon breaking down the press conference. Go to wikibon.org slash big data to see all Jeff's research. Go to wikibon.org slash SLI to look at David Floyer's amazing work on software-led infrastructure. Uh, David Floyer will be presenting uh, later in the day on uh, one, uh, one hour on the virtualization of SAP. We'll discuss for an hour. You're not going to present for an hour. <laughs> we're going we're to report the findings from your work there. And of course, go to siliconangle.com. We got explosive coverage from Sapphire, ServiceNow, Google I.O. starts today. Uh, we got it all there, it's a reference point for tech innovation. We'll be right back after this short break with more on the ground coverage from SAP Sapphire in Orlando.